Thank God for me. When Doom was first released and inspired a wave of pretenders, what did we call those pretenders? We called them Doom Clones, didn't we? Yes. <coughs> when Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night made their mark, what did we call the games that followed? Those side-scrolling action platformers with the maps and the items and the backtracking? We called them Metroidvanias. Yes, we did. <coughs> And what do we call those action RPGs with the stamina meters and the difficulty and the dying and the respawning and the picking up your dead bits? We call them Souls Likes after Dark Souls. <laughs> now that Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has turned the battle royale genre into a smash hit, what do we call it? Well, we don't call them PUBG clones or PUBG likes or PUBG vanias, we call them battle royale games. Why? Well, because we're more likely to call them Fortnite clones at this point. Let's find out why with this video! Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, by the vast majority of reasonable metrics, is a success. Not just a success, in fact, but a premium bona fide a worldwide hit. Although it didn't invent the genre, contrary to its claims, Battlegrounds undoubtedly had the biggest hand in turning the Battle Royale style game into a global hit, paving the way for plenty of pretenders and a gaggle of persistently bewildered major publishers wondering what the shiny new thing is and can they have it now. Success, though, comes in many forms, and while PUBG is undoubtedly a massive game that remains a moneymaker and a most played title to this day, it's also an incredible creative failure. At least if we define success by the ambition of the creators and whether or not their creation actually lived up to said ambition. In that regard, given the behaviour of the PUBG creators lately, their game has ultimately faltered, if not fallen on its face. In PUBG, it's clear by now that Blue Hole Entertainment, Player Unknown, and crew wanted not just a popular video game format, but an unimpeachable brand that no one else could touch. They didn't just want to be on top of the mountain, they wanted to be the mountain. PUBG was a landmark title, but that wasn't enough. This game wanted to be the first and last word in the Battle Royale genre. And in that regard, there can be no debating the issue of PUBG's utter and total failure. It's no secret by now that Fortnite Battle Royale has reached to those nooks and crannies of public attention that PUBG failed to find. A veritable mainstream success and a pop culture mainstay, Fortnite skyrocketed ahead of PUBG in the public consciousness. I mean, fucking Drake is talking about producing a song about the game for God's sake. And fundamentally, it's the same Battle Royale game as Battlegrounds, albeit with an added building mechanic. The concept of Hunger Games style survival as a mass of competitive players are enclosed together is shared across both games, but while PUBG came first, Epic Games, with what started as a quick addition to a co-op shooter, has turned Fortnite into a cow so full of cash its milk is green. And the folks behind PUBG, well, they didn't appear to handle being outperformed with what we might classify as grace. Publisher Blue Hole Entertainment made no bones about the fact it believed Fortnite copied their formula, which might very well be true, but this was the first instance of the PUBG team fundamentally misunderstanding the business they're in. So angry with Epic were the folks at Blue Hole they didn't even like getting a shout out from Epic, who said they were fans of PUBG and H1Z1 when they announced their own Fortnite version. In response, a Blue Hole spokesperson said, this was never discussed with us and we don't feel that it's right, suggesting that rather than giving a nod to their inspiration, Epic Games was using them for promotion. This might be the first time in the history of the video game industry I've seen a game publisher upset that their product got free advertising. Further demonstrating its lack of knowledge, or perhaps naivete, I love that word, Blue Hole confirmed it was contemplating further action with regards to Fortnite, a clear legal threat. And like I said, Fortnite might very well have copied PUBG after seeing its success, but when it comes to lifting a basic gameplay formula, well, you can more or less do it. Nobody really owns gameplay mechanics for the most part, they're not intellectual property, they don't really classify as brandable artistic expression. If that were the case, we'd have 
have far fewer games in the world. Hell, H1Z1 or the Culling could realistically accuse PUBG of copying them and take action themselves if Bluehole ever got what it wanted. And this isn't just true in games, this happens in movies as well. Look, here's the cover for Transmorphers, a movie that was made by actual people. Ah. The Battlegrounds publisher wisely didn't hit out at Epic Games that far, but it did hit out, striking instead a Chinese company called NetEase over not one, but two Battle Royale games they published for phones. Both Rules of Survival and Knives Out are PUBG clones, meant undoubtedly to get players' attention while they look for PUBG Mobile. Of that, there's no denying. They look like PUBG, they play like PUBG, I wonder how many times I can say PUBG, and the PUBG team hit the cloning factory with a lawsuit alleging copy copyright infringement for pretty much everything, from the gameplay to the use of certain weapons and even the appearance of storage containers. Since both Knives Out and Rules of Survival are shameless copies of Battlegrounds, one can have sympathy for the frustration, nobody likes being copied, I've been copied plenty of times, it sucks, especially if someone's more successful doing your shtick, but you spend your sympathy credit if you show your ass in the fallout and Blue Hole's Blue Hole is gaping open for everybody to see. Immediately the world jumps on some of the lawsuit's silliest arguments, most notably the frying pan. Rules of Survival has a frying pan as a weapon! <gasps> The Battlegrounds team argues frying pans are unique weapons to PUBG, going so far as to take a page from the Ubisoft playbook and call them iconic. Unfortunately, their assertion is bollocks, not just from a legal standpoint, but a factual one as well. Left 4 Dead 2 has a frying pan in it. Team Fortress 2 has a frying pan in it. Silent Hill Downpour has a frying pan in it. Fable has a frying pan in it. I could do a top 10 frying pans in video games video and not even have PUBG on the shortlist. Now I see what the lawsuit is trying to to do, of course. Their lawyers even using memes to show players identifying a frying pan with the PUBG experience, and there's an argument to be made from a moral or ethical standpoint. But here's Battlegrounds' biggest problem and why it's a total failure despite being a complete success. Nothing that made PUBG successful could legally be claimed as PUBG's property. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds may have catapulted a genre to worldwide popularity, but as a game it's so generic looking and lacking in identifiable branding, it's practically laying down in the open and asking the game industry to tear chunks off it. If you look at any footage of Fortnite, you know it's Fortnite. The art style is unique to Epic Games, the character models and weapons and environments are adequately fantastical, cartoony, and most importantly designed by original Epic Games artists. Fortnite drops players into battle from an immediately recognisable bus slash hot air balloon. They have originally designed and named items like the boogie bomb or slurp juice. Even old fashioned med kits have been given a distinct look and feel, so they're unmistakably part of the Fortnite brand. And what does Battlegrounds have? A brown wasteland of derelict buildings and storage containers. Bog standard weapons and gear that look like they could belong in any other shooter. Realism's one thing, but you gotta have something, and when it comes to branding, unique identifiables, things that can actually be copyrighted and trademarked, you have embarrassingly little outside of any official artwork and the game's name. The lawsuit against NetEase alleges not just frying pans, but healing items like energy drinks were stolen, the phrase winner winner chicken dinner was stolen, the use of an airdrop into the map was stolen, but the problem is PUBG never invented any of that shit. Any of it. This bus Fortnite has? Original. Unique. Unmistakably Fortnite. This plane? It's just a fucking plane, and any fucking game can have just a fucking plane. PUMK is easy to rip off because they lay claim to nothing that cannot be very safely ripped off. With seemingly no sense of shame, the lawsuit goes so far to attack NetEase for having, as I said, storage containers as environmental details. And considering environmental details and other items in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds are store bought assets from the Unreal Engine storefront, that comes across as just a little bit rich. There are things in PUBG you can just buy from the Unreal Store and put in your own game, and they want to lay claim to fucking shipping containers. Get out of here! On top of that, PUBG's character models, weapons, everything is so generic 
generic and basic that you could make any game look almost exactly like it with a little money, a little time and even less effort. Bluehole can call it a ripoff all it likes, but Fortnite is a more intelligently built brand than Battlegrounds could ever hope to be. Hell, the fact it has an unmistakable brand puts it light years ahead of the game that launched a thousand copies. You can steal Fortnite's bus, its art style, those characters, that stuff you can nick. That's a ripoff. Ain't nothing to steal in PUBG by comparison. It's open season on all its features because you can't claim copyright on gameplay fundamentals, and it's open season on the look and feel because the look and feel so utterly bog bloody standard. It lacks any sort of story, it doesn't take place in a world with an identity or history or basic context. It has nothing. PUBG has nothing outside of some pictures and logos. Even Radical Heights can claim more original intellectual property, and Radical Heights is the transmorphers of Battle Royale. Being first to the marketplace is all well and good, but you better make sure you have a flavour so bold and innovated there is no mistaking you made it. A flavour so original that if someone does try and copy you, you've actually got a leg to stand on in court. The problem with PUBG is that it rushed out to market. Filled with store-bought assets and placeholder items, Battlegrounds was asking to be thieved from. They made a flaming homer and didn't think far enough ahead to stop the flaming mo. As a result, a company with more resources and experience lifted the formula, slapped their trademark, and copyrights and recognisability all over it and skyrocketed to success as the true vanguard of the latest industry gold rush. On top of that, they were able to make a more stable game, a more feature-rich, visually appealing, interactively tighter game, by all accounts, a better game. And unlike PUBG, it was free. Free and ubiquitous, coming to more platforms for added audience reach. Only held back by not being on Steam. Though these days that might be a blessing in disguise. Blue Hole was outspent, outclassed, outmatched, and it had no way to protect itself because it had nothing it could realistically protect. I'd have more sympathy for the company left in the dust if its grapes weren't so eye-wateringly sour, if it wasn't moaning and complaining about being ripped off instead of taking measures and maybe the money it's made to ensure PUBG looked and felt unique enough to, I don't know, not be ripped off, if it wasn't eroding any credibility it might have retained by attempting to lay claim to frying pans as melee weapons, I'd have played a moderately sized violin, if it wasn't calling the concept of using a parachute and I quote, a creative artistic experience created by PUBG. Fucking what? I might be commiserating a bit more than I'm face palming, but their claims are so weak and embarrassing, and that lawsuit is so absurd I can stop on practically any random page and find something to knock me incredulous. And coming from someone who was once sued for 15 million dollars over criticising somebody's video games, that should bloody tell you something. By the way, I say all this as someone who enjoys Battlegrounds a lot and currently doesn't much care for the unique trappings of Fortnite. It's just not for me. I like the more straightforward nature of Battlegrounds, but whatever infringement its creators are decrying is, as far as I can see, in their fucking heads. And it's not like they've been left destitute, they're the second biggest game in gaming's biggest current trends. They're on the second to top rung of a ladder made of gold. And if they'd had ladders made of gold in PUBG, that would have been something original. Could have sued over that. The best way to avoid imitation is to make imitation take effort. If imitators liked hard work, they wouldn't be imitators, but that's why PUBG is the most successful failure there is, because it struck oil and then handed everybody a bucket. Or in this case, a frying pan. <laughs> At this point, I could do some self-promotion. I could talk about the fact that I'm a playable and voiced boss character in Streets of Red Devil's Dare Deluxe, which is on PS4 and PC and Xbox One and Switch. Uh, and, oh, I'm on a Switch game, and I could go, oh, that's brilliant. And you can talk about how, how wet it makes you, uh, all of your squeezy little holes, that you get to kill me in a game, like some people have expressed online, uh, that they're quite happy about that, that they could actually murder me in a game, so that's good, you can do that. I could talk about that, or I could talk about the fact I'm in an actual wrestling match on May 19th, uh, I could talk about that, my, 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 my tag match that Stardust is in, um, you know, I, I'll, and then, then I could go into the long law about why I say I'm in a tag match when Stardust is in a tag match. And we could talk about the, the duality of man and the different characters there, uh, and, and why I refer to Stardust sometimes as myself and sometimes as a different person. And there's a whole complex web we could weave with that, but, 
I could also talk about that feeling you get when you go to the toilet and you go for a piss and you think, right, that's my toilet business done, and you leave, but like a minute later you need a shit and you think, why didn't my asshole tell me that like moments ago? Or even worse, if you do a poo and you leave and you suddenly need to do another poo and you're like, how much poo is in me? I have to go. Thank God for me.